health is the best investment we can ever make in our life very good evening viewers welcome to bmc global live al hilal health world an exclusive health talk myself marina francis the topic for our discussion today is vitamin d deficiency so we all know that vitamin d is a very essential nutrient in our life in our body having sufficient amount of vitamin d definitely gives us a range of benefits for our body so when there is a deficiency of that vitamin there are many health problems that we may have to face so in today's episode let us discuss all such health problems and why vitamin d is necessary in our body and joining with us today is a very apt person to talk to us a specialist orthopedic surgeon with over 7 years of experience in the field dr imit kodungukaran he has completed mbbs from pushpakiri medical college and post graduation from kottayam medical college currently working at al hilal hospital salmabad branch so let us hear more from dr about vitamin d deficiency very good evening doctor good evening welcome to health world today's episode thank you doctor so let us begin with the questions yeah. firstly for a clarity for the viewers mm -hmm. can you introduce to us what is vitamin d at first uh, we will see what are vitamins okay vitamins are basically organic compounds that are required in very small quantity for the metabolism of a body although the required amount is very less still they play major important roles in our body okay. there are around 13 vitamins known to us okay. and uh, and they are not synthesized inside our body so that's why we have to get them from our diet okay. the only exception to this is vitamin d okay. because vitamin d is the only vitamin that can be synthesized inside our body so doctor you said that vitamin d is synthesized inside our body yes. so how is vitamin d formed inside our body um we all know that the vitamin d is synthesized by exposure to the sunlight you must have heard of this thing yes uh so that's why vitamin d is also called sunshine vitamin okay so what's happening is when we are exposed to the sunlight um specifically the ultraviolet b portion of the sunlight it enters through your skin and there is a fat pad behind your skin below your skin okay. and when this ultraviolet rays reaches this fat pad uh, the inactive form of the vitamin d is formed so the inactive form of the vitamin d is formed just beneath your skin okay so the name implies this inactive form is not active it has to undergo activation okay. it has to undergo two step activation so it will be transported through the blood stream first to the liver for its first activation okay. then to the kidney for its second activation then only the active vitamin d is formed okay this active vitamin d once forms this will be transported to different organs for its further actions and the excess vitamin d that is formed can be uh, stored inside our fat because vitamin d is one of the fat soluble vitamin okay so for a pre uh, for a nutshell as a prerequisite for uh, getting a vitamin d production we should be exposed to the direct sunlight and you should have a uh, good functioning liver and kidney okay. so when we analyze the structure function and uh, the formation of vitamin d vitamin d actually resembles uh, a steroid hormone uh, like uh, your uh, uh, progesterone estrogen like that yes. rather than a true vitamin okay uh, that's why i would i would say vitamin d is actually a misnomer doctor so a doubt that may arise is since it is synthesized in our body why is it called a vitamin and not a hormone see uh, to answer this question we have to look back to the history of vitamins okay uh, because most of the vitamin related diseases and its treatment were known to mankind even centuries before the actual discovery of uh, vitamin molecules itself okay mm, for example in case of vitamin d it was discovered during the late 19th or early 20th century okay Uh, at that time coal was the major source of energy okay. the problem with the coal it produces smog so because of that that same period uh, major cities in europe like uh, london paris were heavily polluted okay. so in the same time uh, they have noticed a drastic increase in the incidence of rickets rickets is a 
basically uh, is a vitamin D deficiency state in children which is characterized okay. by bond deformities. Okay. So when we uh, when they uh, like analyze the bond deformities in children, they initially thought it could be because of some nutritional deficiency because vitamin A, B, C were already discovered at that time and they tackled the situation by giving food supplementation. Okay. Uh, the one of the uh, important popular thing at that time was uh, cod liver oil. Mm. They tried cod liver oil on, uh, in these children okay. and uh, in fact cod liver oil is uh, rich in vitamin A as well as vitamin D. So when they gave cod liver oil, they naturally got a good response. Okay. Uh, the, the incidence of rickets reduced. So initially they thought it is because uh, the problem is because of vitamin A deficiency. Then later on uh, what they do? they uh, destroyed vitamin A in the cod liver oil by bubbling oxygen through oxidation process okay. and uh, when they tried this cod liver oil that is deficient in vitamin A, still they got a positive response. Okay. This, that led to the discovery of vitamin D, basically they named vitamin D as vitamin D because they thought it is a nutritional factor that is present in cod liver oil that is responsible for reduction of uh, rickets in children. And at that point, they did not realize that this same vitamin can be synthesized by exposure to sunlight. Mm -hmm. So, that is why they name maybe uh, vitamin D as vitamin D. Mm -hmm. That is a really good information for most viewers there. You have given us an elaborative introduction to vitamin D. Okay. So, doctor, I would like to know what is the importance of vitamin D in our body? Okay. Uh, vitamin D uh, major role is in calcium and phosphorus absorption from our intestine. Okay. Uh, basically from the food that we are taking, the calcium and phosphorus is being absorbed by the help of vitamin D. Okay. This is a major action okay. and uh, because of this action, it helps for or promotes for bond growth, bond remodeling, bond mineralization. Basically, it is crucial for maintaining a healthy skeletal system. Okay. Uh, this is a well known fact, but for the last one or two decades, uh, we have discovered that uh, vitamin D receptors are present in almost all cells in our body. Okay. So that based on this, uh, they did more studies and they concluded that vitamin D has many more physiological roles to play in the body okay. than initially thought. Mm, for example, uh, in case of immune system, vitamin D is essential for keeping a good immune system. You know, immune system is our defensive uh, system in our body that protect against uh, uh, the bacteria, virus and all. Yes. So once vitamin D is less, we are prone to get more infections. Okay. And vitamin D is essential for a proper functioning muscle and nerve. Uh, vitamin D is essential for prevention of many diseases like metabolic conditions like diabetes, obesity, okay. cardiovascular diseases and uh, it is important for prevention of some of the cancers also like colorectal cancer, uh, then uh, prostate cancer, breast cancer, etc. Okay. And some of the neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's disease, some autoimmune conditions like uh, uh, multiple sclerosis for uh, like a child, uh, the pregnancy related complications in case of infertility is all implicated in, this case, okay. in these cases. And uh, the list is very long actually. And uh, even for uh, the current situation, uh, COVID infections, it is shown that uh, vitamin D deficiency, uh, deficient individuals show more severe COVID related infections. Okay. So uh, that is how vitamin D is very important in our body. Yes, doctor. So since it is such a such an important vitamin D, mm. what are the different sources of vitamin D available? We know sunlight is one. Yeah, yeah. That I mentioned all the, yes. uh, already. Sunlight is, a, uh, sunlight is a source and sunlight is the major source also. Okay. At least uh, 80 to 90 percentage of the uh, vitamin D we have to get from the sunlight. Okay. The rest 10 to 20 percentage only we will get from the uh, food that we are taking. Okay. Considering the food uh, that are rich in vitamin D, mostly they are non-vegetarian foods okay. like uh, uh, mostly cod liver oil, mm -hmm. fatty fish, uh, egg yolk, milk, then poultry, meat, etc. And one another source of food, uh, food source is food uh, fortification. Food fortification is basically uh, adding extra nutrients. In case of vitamin D, adding extra vitamin D to the food items that we consume in a daily basis okay. like uh, milk and milk products. Okay. You must have seen in milk cartons and all they are uh, mentioning how much extra vitamin D uh, we are yes. adding ex uh, for the for tackling the situation of vitamin D deficiency. Considering sunlight as a source for vitamin D, there are some factors that can influence the amount of vitamin D produced by the sunlight. Okay. The important factors are 
the time and duration of exposure. This is an important factor because um, there is a popular belief that early morning and uh, late afternoon sunlight is very good for getting yes. sunlight, uh, getting good uh, vitamin D production. But that is not actually true. Actually, vitamin D production is more if you are exposed to your field during the midday sunlight. That is between 11 to 3 o'clock. Okay. Uh, because in the midday sunlight, there is more ultraviolet B rays. Mm -hmm. And uh, the angle by which the, ultra, the sunlight is coming is also com vertical. So, uh, this sunlight causes more vitamin D production. Okay. But the problem with the midday sunlight, if you get exposed for a prolonged period, uh, the same ultraviolet rays can be harmful for your body also. Like it can cause uh, sunburns, uh, skin melanomas, uh, yes. cancers, etc. So, I would recommend uh, if you are exposing yourself during the midday sunlight, uh, 10 minutes thrice weekly will be enough. Okay. But if you are exposing yourself during the early morning or late afternoon sunlight, that is more uh, like uh, more safer, uh, you have to get a little bit more like uh, uh, 20 to 30 minutes you have to get exposed. Okay. Then other factors include. Uh, the, uh, the the sunlight should be direct sunlight. It should not be through uh, uh, glass, plastic or cloth or anything like that. Because even plain glass also filters most of the ultraviolet rays. Okay. So, it should be direct sunlight on your skin. Okay. Another factor that uh, factor is uh, the skin tone. Because uh, if you have more melanin, the melanin is a natural protectant against uh, ultraviolet rays. So, if your skin is more colored, you might have more melanin pigment. This more melanin uh, will block most of the ultraviolet rays. Okay. So, this is a non-modifiable factor. Okay. The, 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 the point is that if you have a darker skin, you, you have to get a little bit more sunlight to get enough vitamin D production. Okay. Another point is uh, at least 30 percent of the body should be exposed to the sunlight to get enough vitamin D production. Uh, that means uh, roughly uh, your head and neck, arms and legs should be exposed to get enough vitamin D production. Okay. Another thing usage of sunscreens, because sunscreen uh, are designed to uh, cut off ultraviolet rays. Okay. So, in case of sunscreens, you can see in the sunscreen there is, uh, they are mentioning a SPF factor. Mm -hmm. SPF factor is sun protection uh, factor. The, if the SPF factor is more than 30, it will block at around 95 percent of the ultraviolet B rays. Okay. So, if you are using a sunscreen, there is a chance that you are getting less production of vitamin D. Yes. So, that is why this is the reasons why um, uh, all uh, uh, individual variations can happen okay. even if you are exposed to the sunlight. Okay. Okay, these are about the sources of vitamin D. Okay. Definitely doctor that would have been a very useful information for the viewers out there. We have heard a lot about vitamin D, its uses, why it is necessary. We have to know much more about due to a vitamin D deficiency. We shall be back after a very short break, so stay tuned. Welcome back, you are watching BMC Global Live Al Hilal Health World, an exclusive health talk. We are discussing about vitamin D deficiency in today's episode. We have heard till now why vitamin D is important for us. Now let us move on to what happens when we have a deficiency of vitamin D. So doctor, yeah. firstly let me ask who all are at higher risk of getting a vitamin D deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency uh, we are seeing mostly in uh, two extremes of ages okay. like in case of infants and in old age. Okay. In infants, infants are totally depend on, dependent upon the breast milk yes. and uh, human milk considered to be a poor source of vitamin D okay. uh, because human milk contains around 25 to 70 units of vitamin D per litre okay. and infants requirement is around 400 units per day. Okay. So, you can see a huge gap between the supply and the demand. Yes. So, that is why we always tell people to give vitamin D supplementation for the infants, those who are on exclusive breastfeeding. Okay. Another group is uh, old age people. Old age people, uh, they usually spend most of the time indoor only and even if they are exposed to the sunlight, the mechanism by which the, sun, uh, the, the vitamin D is produced in response to sunlight is very inefficient in old age. That is why in old age, we are seeing um, more of vitamin D deficiency. Another group, the uh, group at risk is uh, those who are obese. 
because obese people uh, there is a thick uh, pad of fat beneath their skin. So whatever vitamin D is formed beneath the skin that will be uh, sequestrated inside this fat layer. It is no longer available for the blood circulation. So that is why uh, obesity is a risk factor. Then uh, another risk factor darker skin tone I already mentioned. Another group is uh, vegans because in strict vegetarian like I mentioned before uh, almost all food sources of vitamin D are non-vegetarian food. So vegetarian people are more tend to get vitamin D deficiency. Another uh, few people are uh, like uh, patients with uh, kidney and liver problems because I mentioned before vitamin D activation requires uh, a properly functioning liver and kidney. So these are the people who are at risk of getting vitamin D deficiency. Doctor, being in Bahrain, uh, one important question to ask is, yeah. in the Middle East, we find more cases of vitamin D deficiency, I suppose. So why is it so in spite of being a country with large mm. sunlight? Yeah, it's a, a relevant question Yes. Uh, because uh, we are getting uh, bright sunlight all around here, but still mm. uh, we are getting maximum incidence of uh, uh, vitamin D deficiency. Uh, it could be because uh, because of this hot and humid climate, uh, we tend to protect ourselves from getting exposed to the hot sunlight yes. uh, by uh, like uh, by uh, scheduling all our outdoor activities after the sunset. Yes. Almost all our jobs are indoor. Okay. We use uh, all closed uh, transportation systems and uh, we cover our balconies, terrace with the glass, yes. with curtains and all. And even if we are going outside. Uh, we use fully covered clothes or else we use sunscreens. So, so basically we have plenty of sunlight but we are not making use of that. Uh, but the thing is that these conditions are improving. You all know that uh, uh, public media, health professionals, everybody giving more importance for, uh, for the screening, for awareness and treatment of vitamin D deficiency. And uh, you can see that uh, vitamin D is part of most of the health packages now. And uh, vitamin D fortification is also uh, is uh, effectively implemented. So I I hope that in future this will be corrected. True. So doctor, what are the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency? See, uh, vitamin D deficiency in severe case of vitamin D deficiency in children we call it as rickets, mm -hmm. and in adults we call it as osteomalacia. The basic mechanism is defective calcium transport to the bone. So, in children as they are growing stage, they manifest as uh, like uh, uh, bowing of bones, uh, particular chest deformities, uh, large head, growth retardation, uh, protuberant abdomen like that. There are some particular features that we see in children. In adults, it is characterized by softer brittle bones, frequent fractures, bone pains and all. But believe me, uh, these extreme presentations of vitamin D is very few nowadays. And uh, most of the vitamin D deficiencies we are uh, seeing as uh, uh, either no, without any symptoms or with mild vague non-specific symptoms like uh, muscle pain, bone pains, weakness, uh, hair loss, frequent infections and uh, like mood changes like that. So these symptoms are actually very non-specific that it is difficult to diagnose vitamin D deficiency only by clinical examination. Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, vitamin D is a potent molecule, it is actually a hormone. Uh, high vitamin D can cause problems in our body. We call it as hypervitaminosis D. And uh, this is exclusively because of uh, a large intake of large quantities of uh, vitamin D supplements, not because of extra sunlight or giving extra food or something like that. It is because of taking more of uh, vitamin D supplements. And uh, initially, this can be manifest as abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and all. But uh, Lastly, uh, later what happens is it will cause more calcium in the blood, it will cause, cause widespread calcium deposition and it will cause kidney stones, kidney failure, heart failure that it's, it can, it, it will harm your body. Another problem without checking, taking vitamin D medication is uh, there can be individual variation uh, when on medication because uh, some people may have a problem with the uh, intestinal absorption of vitamin D, some people have liver and kidney problems for activation of vitamin D. So, monitoring is also important. So, that is why I, I will not recommend uh, vitamin D medication without checking and without monitoring. Okay. So, doctor, we discussed many aspects regarding vitamin D in today's episode. So, finally, what is your advice, take away for the viewers? Okay. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, vitamin D deficiency is a global pandemic. Yes. 
and we are living in an area where there is maximum incidence of vitamin D deficiency. Yes. So, there is high chance that you are also having vitamin D deficiency. Yes. So, please keep monitoring especially those who are at risk like old age people, infants, uh, those who are obese, those who are doing uh, only indoor jobs and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, get at least 10 minutes of sunlight every day, make it a habit, yes. uh, make use of your balconies, terrace, beaches, etc. And uh, do not ever self medicate because vitamin D is a potent molecule. If in doubt, uh, approach a doctor. Okay. Thank you very much doctor for joining with us today and telling us many new information about vitamin D. Definitely this episode would have been very useful and very informative for all viewers out there. Until we meet again next week, same day, same time in the next episode of Al Hilal Health World. This is Marina Francis signing off. Stay healthy, stay happy. Good night.